between 4 Maryville and 5 the Wraith Interchange. That's BBC Radio Scotland Travel. This is News Drive with Laura Maxwell and Ken McDonald. Still to come, David Cameron's leaving Buckingham Palace. Theresa May is there to take over. Who is she and what sort of a PM will she make? And uh, stay with us as we cover events live from Westminster and uh, Downing Street for that matter and reflect on the impact of all the changes that may happen to Scotland as a result. The time now is 5.31. 92 to 95 FM, 810 medium wave and on digital. BBC Radio Scotland. News and sport for the borders with Richard Gordon. Good afternoon. A Kelso man who downloaded indecent images of children and distributed them has been jailed for two years at Jedburgh Sheriff Court. 24-year-old Alan Corcoran, whose address was given as care of Edinburgh Prison, also admitted sexual contact with a 15-year-old girl. As well as the jail sentence, Corcoran will be under supervision for four years following his release. His name has been placed on the Sex Offenders Register for ten years. With Theresa May about to be installed as the country's second female Prime Minister, Conservative Group Leader on Scottish Borders Council Michelle Ballantyne says it shows you don't need positive discrimination for a woman to lead a political party. I've always been of the view that people should be appointed and um, voted for based on merit. Um, I don't believe in 50-50 systems or positive discrimination. And I think in a way what the Conservative Party do, is doing is proving that you don't need positive discrimination. We are the only parties that have managed to Prime Minister, no Prime Minister in, and we now have done it twice, and that is without any bump for women behind, the, other than their ability to get to the top. Um, and I think we should actually be looking at that and saying, actually, if, if people are finding it difficult within the political system, the question is, is it an issue with the party, or is it an issue actually with women's ability? And I think the Conservatives are proving that without positive discrimination, you can get there. Seven months after severe flooding hit Hoyk, work is still ongoing to restore vital infrastructure, which was damaged in the deluge. Scottish Water is about to undertake a major scheme to repair a main sewer, which was damaged last December. That will mean, though, some disruption for residents in and around Mansfield Road. A drop-in information session is being held from 4.30 to 7.30pm this evening in the Evergreen Hall. Local councillor Stuart Marshall says householders and business operators who might be affected should go along. There will be disruption. Uh, there are road closures probably in the Mansfield Road area for up to 11 weeks. This will all be explained to the, to the public and of course the businesses who have been affected by the events of December the 5th. It's a mammoth project that Scottish Water are undertaking and in cons consultation with Scottish Borders Council and I think it's only right that the public come along and uh, see for themselves the plans and, and I give credit to Scottish Water and Scottish Borders Council for engaging with the public on this exercise. Borderers are being asked to help in the development of a plan which intended to reduce crime and reconviction rates in the region. Under the 2016 Community Justice Scotland Act, the existing justice authorities will by next year be replaced by joint working through local community planning partnerships. A justice board has already been established in the borders. It will develop plans and make necessary changes in how services are provided. The overall aim is to prevent and reduce reoffending by addressing underlying causes. Anyone who wanted to contribute to the plan should contact the council online or directly by the 11th of September. Deborah Sheriff Court heard her financial agent who'd fraudulently obtained more than £3,900 didn't carry out the unpaid work to which she was sentenced for committing the crime. Patricia Hitchcock has more. 39-year-old Lorna Waddle of Orchard Park in Kelso claimed she was suffering from depression, anxiety, back pain and an ankle injury and was unable to complete the work. Sheriff Peter Patterson was going to impose a restriction of liberty order instead, keeping her in her home between 7pm and 7am. But Waddle's lawyer requested the hours be amended to 6am as that was when her client left her house for her job as a part-time cleaner. Sheriff Patterson described the situation as farcical, that Waddle said she was unable to do unpaid work for health reasons, but worked as a part-time cleaner. He deferred sentence until August 8th for a psychological report to be compiled. Waddle was working as an agent for Provident Financial Management Services Limited when she obtained £3,936.82 by fraud between February 1st, 2012 and February 20th, 2013. She also admitted embezzling £697.75 from the company between November 1st, 2012 and March 12th, 2013. In football, Berwick Rangers took a pre-season knock last night. They lost by four goals to nil at Shieldfield against Gateshead from the Vanarama National League. 
Meanwhile, Selkirk continue their pre-season build-up tonight. They have a fixture against Spartans at Yarrow Park. Selkirk's manager Gary O'Connor hopes his side can continue in winning form ahead of a final warm-up match against Hibs in a fortnight's time. And what you want to start the season, you want your strikers scoring goals, and you, and you want to be winning games, you want that winning mentality. And that's what I'm trying to draw into the boys. Um, you know, Hibs will be our toughest game. It's, uh, that, that, that's, that's the tough game we wanted to put in the schedule, um, and we wanted to, you know, get games that we could win. In racing, Toffee Apple made a swift reappearance after Saturday's Hamilton victory to land a one mile two furlong handicap at Beverly yesterday for Hoyk Bourne trainer Keith Dalgleish. And she could bid for a speedy hat trick as she holds an entry for Hamilton tomorrow. Bonner's weather now, here's Causer Quamer. A mixture of sunshine and showers to end the day, and one or two of these showers may still be rather heavy for a time, but they will tend to die out this evening for most to leave dry conditions and some late sunshine, so it will be dry overnight with long clear spells developing and lows of 8 Celsius with the winds falling light for all. Tomorrow high pressure is in charge and after a cool start it will be dry with bright or sunny spells and highs of 19 Celsius with a light northwesterly wind. BBC Radio Scotland's weather for the borders. News Drive on BBC Radio Scotland. Tonight with Ken MacDonald and Laura Maxwell. The time now, 23 minutes to six. Well... David Cameron has resigned as Prime Minister. Theresa May has arrived at Buckingham Palace. She's now meeting the Queen and she will be appointed Her Majesty's 13th Prime Minister. Let's go back to Downing Street now. Our Westminster correspondent Nick Erdley is there. Um, Nick, I suppose a little over half an hour ago we had a very poignant speech from David Cameron. What sort of reaction was there to it there? I think it was accepted that David Cameron's speech was quite heartfelt um, and it, it really reflects what the argument he's been making for the last few weeks, doesn't it? That the country he believes is stronger um, the, the key test of that he believes has been the economy and that's something that he thinks is in a better position than when he took over six years ago, Laura. Um, the, the, the things really start to move now. The rapidity with which this process takes place is playing out before our eyes at the moment. It was about half an hour ago that David Cameron left Downing Street. He's been in the palace, he's been in there, he's officially resigned. Theresa May is in Buckingham Palace with the Queen as we speak, um, where the Queen will be offering her the position of Prime Minister, asking her whether or not she can um, command the support of her government. Um, and then she will, I'm sure, offer her some advice on how she'll, uh, she'll play the role it's, of course, the Queen's 13th Prime Minister that she's officially appointed. So she's had plenty of experience of doing this, um, certainly more than most of the people that she receives into that position. Well, while they're over the uh, the uh, wall there, past St James's Park, uh, Park up at the Palace, what's been happening at Downing Street? Because I suppose all those staff who were lined up to say cheerio to David Cameron are now back inside preparing for the arrival of the next Prime Minister. Yes, they are indeed. So we expect Theresa May to be here in Downing Street in about 10-15 minutes its time and um, normally that audience she has with the monarch isn't particularly long and um, she'll come back here shortly where all the world's media's eyes are still uh, fixed on that number 10 door and we expect to hear some words from Theresa May about what uh, her government will prioritize what she will hope to achieve and what sort of Prime Minister she will want to be and that's a really important speech for her because given the the, the short length of the leadership race the fact that uh, Andrea Leadsom pulled out considerably before was expected Theresa May hasn't had all that much time to tell the public who she will be as Prime Minister. She set out some basic principles. She said, look, I want to uh, make sure that the country works for working people, for example. Um, but we've not heard a full prospectus from Theresa May. We've not heard exactly how um, her government will proceed over its first uh, few weeks and indeed months. So I think that's something that will be at the back of her mind in the next few minutes as she takes the short uh, car ride along the mall back down Whitehall and to where I am on Downing Street. And we will cross live to you when she arrives there. Nick Erdley, thank you very much indeed. 
Now, while we've been swapping Prime Ministers today, the First Minister's been in London for some post-Brexit meetings. Nicola Sturgeon called for economic stimulus measures to prevent a UK-wide recession. She was speaking following a private meeting with the Governor of the Bank of England, Mark Carney, to discuss the economic outlook following the EU referendum. She also met with Gibraltar's Chief Minister, Fabian Picardo. Our political correspondent, Glenn Campbell, joins us now live from Westminster, because let's face it, everybody who is anybody is there. Glenn, what was the purpose of both meetings? Well, I suppose the first thing to say is that it is a coincidence that Nicola Sturgeon happens to be in London at this momentous time as power transfers from one Prime Minister to another.